Hey Virgo, Everlong Mystic here. So we're gonna do a Wizard of Oz reading. I have a pack of 10 cards, <clears throat> old school um, Wizard of Oz trading cards. We have a playing card deck, Wizard of Oz. And I bought one of these packs for each of the zodiac signs, shuffled them, and this is your pack. So out of these 10 cards, we're gonna have four that we're gonna read with. I don't want to rip it. I, just, I want to be a little careful here. There we go. Okay, so four cards for Virgo. <laughs> uh oh. All right, so we have a. Uh, we have the Tin Man Sad Song, Virgo. If I only had a heart. <laughs> are, you, are you being a little heartless, Virgo? What's up with that? <clears throat> but it is a song. I think mean, Gemini had two songs. Oh, here's two more cards. All right, well, they're on their way. They've started the venture down the road. <clears throat> oh, Dorothy meets the Scarecrow. Very cool. Okay, so we have... We have the Tin Man's <clears throat> song, Do, uh, If I Only Had a Heart. And then uh, this is right before Dorothy meets the Scarecrow. Next, we have... Oh, the Bon Voyage. The wizard um, is taking Dorothy and Toto in the balloon to go back to Kansas. Final destination. All right, last card, we need one more. Kind of seems like it's part of the farewell by the image because he's wearing the same suit. I think this is <clears throat> them saying goodbye to everyone, then they get in the balloon. So the scarecrow is calling the Wizard of Oz a humbug. And he agrees. Huh. Oh man, I don't remember that part of the movie. Well, let's read it. It says, Dorothy says, who are you? And the Wizard of Oz says, well, I, I am the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy says, you are? I don't believe you. And the Wizard of Oz says, no, I'm afraid it's true. There's no other wizard except me. And then the Scarecrow says, you humbug. And the Lion says, yeah. And the Wizard says, yes, that's exactly so. I'm a humbug. And then Dorothy calls him a very bad man. Huh. It's, it's something about being let down. They're somehow let down by the Wizard. All right, well, this will be interesting. So, Virgo, if you only had a heart. <laughs> that sounds so rude. All right, Virgo, what is this about? It's like, it's, it's almost like you're being a little bit cold about something and uh, you need to warm, warm that up a bit. Ah, so the psychic garden appears again. You're not the only one who has this. And I say psychic garden because uh, obviously the scenery is of a lovely little garden. <clears throat> but it's the Four of Swords, which is that kind of meditative kind of energy. Wow. The 
This is an upgrade. Look at that. Because it's you've got like two gardeny kind of pictures here. You go from this one, the psychic garden, to like this, which is <clears throat> it's infused with magic or something. I mean, like even the like all the flowers are glowing. Even the the tree trunks have like sparkly essence to them. This is like enchanted or something. And it's like to get from wherever, to get from wherever to here, because we do, it would be like the Nine of Wands. A lot of endurance required. Nine of Wands, that's like that wounded warrior kind of thing. Um, Virgo, I kind of want to say that you, you might be a little bit jaded about something. That's why you need to have a heart. There's a coldness that has creeped in that makes it to where when you see it, you don't believe it somehow. It's like not believing this magic or not believing the enchantment of it or not believing that it's so much more than what it first appears to be. Look at that. <clears throat> All right, so Virgo, if you have been, if you've been wanting things to change, change for the better, right? Your, your fortune to change for the better or just your life or what have you, it's, it has something to do with whatever this coldness is that has creeped in. There's something that you need to warm up to a little bit, and it may not be something that <clears throat> you normally would. I just, I'm seeing you as being very careful. Too careful. About something. So, let's look here. This is before she meets, yeah, Dorothy meets the Scarecrow. Scarecrow crow needs a brain. Um, let me see what the conversation says. So sh he scares her because she doesn't know who's talking. And he's trying to tell her she doesn't know which way to go. And he's trying to tell her that way is nice. Well, the other way is nice, too. So I almost wonder if this is a... Uh, is this a, is there a crossroads in this scene? I don't know. I don't remember there being a crossroads. <clears throat> but the scarecrow is really of no help because he's offering uh, the same answer for both ways. Oh, maybe it is the same. Maybe it's all the same road, Virgo. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> There's the scarecrow. Uh, there he is. It's the same either way. Hmm. And you know what's funny is this card can go either way for me. Um, so the jacks I kind of read as either like a page or a knight. If it was the page, it would be listen to the scarecrow. He's speaking, you know, some gold there. But if it was the knights, I wouldn't necessarily trust him. <laughs> That's funny. Something about either way, Virgo. Oh, 
now the poppies appear again. I think almost everyone has gotten some form of the poppies. This is overthinking, that's what this is. So it would be like the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords coming out underneath all that? That's this overthinking, Virgo. It's like you're going back to your old ways. Oh look, we have we have nine nine here too. <clears throat> I think Libra had a 9-9. Nine, nine. Alright, so we have the lovers here showing up. So what is this? What is this about? You are ending both of these on a major here, Virgo. Do you feel like I need to pull an extra little card for the the lovers here clarification on the lovers it's about the decision So we have the two <clears throat> we have the two of swords here, which is a decision to make, but refusing to make a decision. But you I don't think that you're refusing. I think you're overthinking yourself to the point where you can't pick a direction. And you know, sometimes the lovers is about a decision. In some lovers card, there's like a third party where um one of them is deciding between one or the other, or you know what I mean? So <clears throat> You got some kind of decision to make here. You need to pick, pick a side of the road or... Or a direction or something. Because the more, the more that you overthink things, the more you're going to feel like you don't even have a brain. I swear. Okay. So let's go to the next section. So here we're looking at... Um, you know, I'm going to do the switcheroo like I did with someone else. This, this comes after this, so I'm just going to switch them around. Because <clears throat> they're having like a little, a little, they're a little bit of at, at odds here with the wizard. Um, but something happens to where like they make up and I think then at the end they go on the balloon. I think that's how that works so this is being at odds with someone or something here the thing that's bothering there's something that's bothering you So this is the Queen of Hearts, <clears throat> but what I'm, so in the, in the image though, I'm seeing, like when I first looked at Dorothy, I was like, like what I, sh like what I show up as or what I appear like is a source of, um, abrasion, perhaps Virgo. It's like you're being asked to, I don't know what, because like, you know, like the, the queen of um, hearts or cups is, you know, the most intuitive queen. So what is it that you're supposed to be intuiting here, Virgo? <clears throat> wow. So we have the, the Ten of Wands. That's a big old, big old burden. 
It's almost like, okay, so we're starting with this kind of abrasive situation where there's kind of like, you're the Wizard of Oz, you suck, or whatever, <laughs> you know? And then it's like, you're, you're kind of like, you know, okay, so, so which is, is an example, right? A metaphor, an example of like a situation where you're at odds with something. What are you at odds with? The way, either the way you are reflected or the way that you show up to something or as something. And it's a huge, it's a burden. But what I'm seeing is like, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a burden, but it has the potential to grow bigger and grow bigger and grow bigger. So it's like something <clears throat> needs to be done here. And the thing is, it's like this, this tin man, he's rusted. Tin roof rusted. He's, he's rusted solid, like he, he can't move. Like there's an immobility here. And it's the same, it's a similar scenario with the Nine of Swords just being overthinking to the point of being frozen. It's like it's showing up in another area. It's almost like whatever solution you use in this column here, it's like, I don't know, it's almost like intuitively you will know how to apply it to this situation. There's a card just stuck in my hand right here. I think that's the one, Empress. The Empress knows what to do. I feel like this Empress is, is like a, I'm seeing it as like a person that is someone outside of you, someone bigger than you, someone, I mean, it almost is kind of showing up as this, um, like a guide or um, like even like an ascended master or something on the spirit side of things. Because even here, this is like the, isn't the Queen of Cups like the minor, is she the minor empress? I don't know. But what I can say is there is a whole lot of self-love here that is required. You need to love yourself more, Virgo. So let's look at, let's look at the last bit here. So this is towards the end of the movie. We have the, the wizard and Dorothy um, <clears throat> getting in the balloon, going home to Kansas. Oof. No, I can't take all of those. Dang it. Wow, we have both the tens. We have the ten of swords and the ten of... So you have nine, nine, and ten, ten. <clears throat> you have a ten here. Ten, ten, ten. Alright, so this ten of swords is definitely an ending of something. It's like... Yeah, okay, there's an ending. Um, the, the little... <clears throat> dream or the the oz dream is over it's like you've already confronted reality about about the wizard <clears throat> you found out he wasn't who he said he was he's he's putting you in a balloon to take you back to kansas but even that is not 
it may not be reality, right? Because she kind of just wakes up in her bed. I feel like there's some kind of illusion about yourself that is ending here, right? And it may not be the most pleasant, um, cause you see the steam coming from his head, like, it may be like maybe an angry realization or a frustration that you just have to encounter or confront in order to get this, get to this point where you're at this, this ace of hearts, where you're able to dream again, Virgo. You're able to <clears throat> have wishes and desires and be more open to magic. I think that's the point. That's, it's this point here when you can see this enchanted, beautiful, luminous garden for what it really is. You can finally believe it, right? You're not so cold anymore. The chill lifts. So let's get your final card. So we're gonna take it all right so we're um we're definitely completing a cycle of something here we're completing a cycle of something right and <clears throat> it could be a cold cycle but what we're doing is we are coming back to a place where we can be at home with our emotions we can we can bring a lot more self-love in into ourselves to ourselves, for ourselves, right, Virgos? <laughs> I know, I forgot what I was saying. I think that's it. So we're completing this old cycle, we're beginning a new cycle of self-love. <clears throat> to an even greater degree, because that's what's gonna allow this, this, like, from, from this garden to this garden, that's this cycle right here. I think we're going to be able to see <clears throat> a little bit more, a little bit more magic. There's going to be a little bit more luminescence going forward. All right, Virgo. So this is your message. This is our message. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye, Virgo.